You guys ready for a pity party? I'm talking about a fun pity party. That's right, we're talking about a pity party today, but it's not the pity party you're thinking of, man. This one's actually fun. It's kind of fun if you're a math nerd, all right? So let's get into not only the P-I-T-I, right, of that monthly payment, but we're also going to talk about some additional costs that you're going to have as a homeowner. So we're not looking at the closing costs that you're going to incur on day one. We're looking at any monthly costs that you as a homeowner are going to have, right? And we're just sticking to the basics so I can give you a basic feel of what it looks like to make that monthly payment. So let's start with the P-I-T-I, right? The simple part. The first two letters go hand in hand, the P and the I. It's principal and it's interest, okay? So you're gonna look up, and you can Google this, man. Look up amortization schedule. You can punch in your interest rate, the amount that you're financing, and the years involved in that loan, and it's gonna give you your monthly payment in principal and interest, okay? It's gonna break it down too. So you're gonna see that over time, it starts off really high interest. So let's just say, for example, your monthly payment's two grand, okay? Your, your principal and your interest. I, this is just a guess, but your interest is probably gonna be about $1,700 a month, and your principal is gonna be 300. The next month, it's gonna be like 1680 and 320. And that's slowly over time gonna do this until eventually it breaks even and it's a thousand and a thousand and then it goes the other way. So towards the end of your loan, you're actually paying more in principal, you're paying that loan down quicker then you are paying an interest, okay? But it takes time. The bank wants to make sure they're getting that money up front. So that's exactly what you're looking at when you're looking at that amortization schedule. Again, you need the amount financed, the interest rate, and the years of the loan, which is generally 15 or 30, right? So now you get the P, you got the I. What is the T? The T is everybody's favorite, right? It's taxes. Who doesn't want to pay taxes? So all you've got to do is look up on that listing. You can go to the county records or when you purchase the home, Almost every single time, the MLS is going to have an accurate depiction of what last year's taxes are, okay? Now, you can look up what the average amount that it increases or decreases per year is, but generally speaking, it's going to stay about the same or maybe go up 2 to 3% as a community. Now, when you're looking at the individual home, a home can jump or decrease considerably in a volatile market, right, both up and down year to year. When your home increases a lot more than other homes increase, you're going to make up a bigger portion of that tax burden for that city, county, whoever it is you're paying taxes to, right? So, as an example, maybe you own a lakefront property and in that area, homes are pretty stagnant, but lakefront just goes ballistic. It's nuts. It doubles in value in one year. You can bet that your taxes are going to show that that in the, the reflected amount that you pay at the end of the year, okay? So just be aware of that when you're looking at your taxes. But for the most part, in most markets, you can look at what last year's tax uh, amount was, and you can feel pretty comfortable with that amount, plus maybe two or three percent, all right? So what's that last I, P-I-T-I? -I? Simple, it's insurance. The best way to get an insurance number is to call your insurance company, okay? I always recommend calling two or three so you can shop it around. And don't just look at the number because they offer different things, okay? So make sure that you shop them against each other. Tell them who they're competing against and they'll tell you, well, we do charge 20% more, but in this situation, this situation, in this situation, we're gonna protect you, they're not. Now you can make a good conscious decision, okay? So that's your P, I, T, and your I. What else is there? Well, one of the biggest fees that comes to mind are your utilities. So you've got a lot of basic fees that go along with owning a home that you might not have as a renter, okay? So what are some of those things? You've got your water bill, right? I'll tell you, my house right here, our house is worth about 250, 300. Our house's water bill is 40 bucks. That's pretty common throughout the entire city, uh, is $40. You've got electric. You've got gas. Now that can vary considerably, not only from house to house, right? Depending on how well the house is built, how insulated it is, how hot of an area you live in, how cold of an area you live in, but the cost of the gas or electricity, we'll talk about both at the same time, 
in that area, right? So you've got both those things going. What about your garbage, your recycling? That might cost you money too. And depending upon the city that you live in, you're gonna have to call them, find out whatever program it is they have, and they can give you very accurate numbers. So here, just to give you an example, it's about $75 every two months. So you're looking at about $35, $40 every month when you're budgeting that out, okay? What other costs do you have? The big one that comes to mind, and we have one here too, is your homeowners association. So a lot of times when I think of a homeowners association, I think of the all out homeowners association, right? So you've got a shared building, maybe it's like a townhouse, right? So you have shared walls, shared roof. You've got shared public communities, maybe it's a pool or a gym, something like that. You've got shared sidewalks. They also shovel you out, right? They do a lot of different things for you and then they charge a fee associated with all of those services that they provide you. You want to look at how financially healthy that association is and you have the right to. When you, when you look at that contract, when you sign that purchase agreement, it'll have a spot in there that says how many days you have to look at those documents and be comfortable with them. So you need to look at them because a lot of associations are not run well. You want to know that. A lot of them have a huge surplus of money and you can feel pretty comfortable getting in there if you do have any problems, okay? So the homeowners association here, we have a private beach. It's about two thirds of a mile down in the Puget Sound and we've got a shared park. That's it. They don't do any, they honestly don't even get our roads out front. We got to get ourselves out if it snows, but it doesn't snow that often in Olympia, Washington. So it's only been a problem in the four years that we've lived here one time. Not a big deal. They don't shovel out our sidewalks. We don't have any shared walls. So for that, we pay about three and a quarter a year. That is pennies, man. It's hardly anything. But if you go to some different areas, a lot of those areas that offer you more might charge $500 a grand, maybe even more. So you want to make sure that you're looking into those numbers. That's the basics of your P, your I, your T, your I, your utilities, and homeowners association dues. You guys stay fired up.